Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is Friday and the market's kind of scary today for people who aren't used to this type of cycle, you know, bull cycle, expecting just tons and tons of gains and prices to go up and up and never come down. We're facing a reality right now that the prices do come down. Um, I shared a video a couple of days ago indicating that the price would go down further. And unfortunately, that has happened. Um, so this video today, I just want to talk about where I see the markets going, why I think we should still be positive, why I still think you should be gathering. And this is the time, this perfect sale to be stocking up on your Bitcoin and your favorite alts. We're still in a bull cycle. Believe me, we're still in a bull cycle. So right now, when everybody is fearful, this is the time where you want to stack. I know you've heard the story over and over again, but again, if investing was easy and it was, you could predict the markets, everybody would be millionaires, everybody would be wealthy. Only the strong survive, especially in this crypto space. So today I just want to talk about the market, where I see it going and some activity as to why Bitcoin price is going down and if it's going to continue to do so. And uh, let's get into it. So guys, I hope you're having a good start of the weekend so far. Now, if we look at this chart right now, it is pretty red. We see Bitcoin's down 3%. ETH is down 5%. And there's talks about the ETH ETF being approved next week, or the week after, and it's deep red right now. And I'll show you some activity going on with ETH as well that may be supporting this, this big uh, decline. BNB's going down, AVEX, ADA, Soul, believe it or not, it's almost up, but not really. I mean, Soul is, is hitting that 130 mark, and it seems it went hit 129 a little bit earlier today, but then it ticked right back up. So 130 seems to be the floor for Soul right now. But just a lot of red, a lot of good discounts out there for some of your favorite projects. Um, but that's what we got going on. So the market is not it's kind of gloomy today, kind of gloomy. So fear and greed currently sits at 29. It's crazy. Yesterday we were at 44. Today, 29. So people are very fearful out there. And you can tell just looking through uh, crypto Twitter and some um, Discord chats that I'm a part of. You just see that there's a lot of fear out there. So what's leading to this number and why is it going down and why we could be, you know, maybe down for a little bit? I don't think we're, I'm going to see a quick turnaround right now. That's just me. I'm not reading charts. I'm just looking at macro conditions. Um, and typically, I'm pretty successful with that. But according to CNBC, over 170 billion wiped off cryptocurrencies as market tanks on um, Mt. Gox payment fears. And I think those fears are becoming a reality. I don't think everyone that is getting repayment from Mt. Gox is going to sell all their Bitcoin. They're not crazy. They've been in this space long enough. They've held. They've seen the price of Bitcoin. They know where it's going. But some may take profits. So, you know, I would say 30, 40 percent of these people will be selling. But not everyone is going to sell. I don't think so. It'd be foolish to do so. Um, so some of the key points here in this article, Bitcoin's price slumped more than 6% in 24 hours to hit a low of 54 to its lowest level since February. Altogether, the entire crypto market has shed set 170 billion in combined market cap in the last 24 hours per CoinGecko. On Friday, the trustee of Mt. Gox bankruptcy estate said it has begun making repayments in Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash to some of its creditors through a designated crypto exchanges. So we're, we're starting to see that, and I'll show you a little bit of that as well. Um, so looking at Arkham, Arkham is tracking um, these Mt. Gox transactions in the wallet. And it goes on to say in the past eight hours, the Mt. Gox wallets have moved over 2.7 billion in Bitcoin to their cold wallet. And then they further track it saying about 148 million of BTC was moved out of Mt. Gox wallets with 154 or 84 million sent to BitBank through a Gox address. And then another 63.6 sent to an unknown counterparty listed for repayment exchanges. Including the BTC moved from that one wallet, Mt. Gox wallets continue to hold in excess of 7.5 billion. These movements are likely to be in connection with the Mt. Gox repayment plan, which has just been announced by Mt. Gox trustee. So a lot of people are freaking out, rightfully so, especially if you're new to the space. A lot of people, you know, holding the ETFs, they're probably like, oh, we're trying to get out of Bitcoin. 
And then you have others, some newbies that are in the space, probably, you know, take us a profit as well. Um, so that's what's leading to this price. And because of this pressure and this headwind, I could see the price of Bitcoin staying a little low for a little bit. You know, at least um, my my thing, I think after like election round, you know, from September through December, that's probably what we'll see the upswing. So for now, I'm going to be stacking just because I don't think this is going to go away for a little bit. Um, also, not only Mt. Gox, we got Germans. They, they're still the German government still unloading. Um, previously, they were unloading to exchanges. Now there's a glimmer of hope because it looks like they're trying to do OTC exchanges. And if they do that, that won't impact the price of Bitcoin as much. So according to Arkham again, which are tracking their wallets, the government wallets, said that the government, German government that is, received about 111 Bitcoin last night back from addresses linked to Kraken, Bitstamp, and Coinbase. And then 52 or 57 million has been moved out of their wallets this morning. Where did they go? About 30 million of that went to flow traders. Now, flow traders assist people with moving, um, you know, moving money around. So basically professionals that are doing it. And hopefully these guys and gals will be doing it the right way, probably trying to do it through OTC and not doing it straight to a crypto exchange. And then the remaining 27 million went to um, 139PO likely deposit for institutional OTC service. So I think this is going to help with the price of Bitcoin, you know, because we're not only getting hit by Mt. Gox, um, you have Grayscale still unloading, and then you have the German government. Now maybe the German government, we could take them out a little bit. Maybe they start trading OTC, and we only got to worry about the, you know, the FUD from Mt. Gox and the like. Now, if we look at the spot Bitcoin flows, how has that been going with all this news? Well, if we look at this week so far, we see that Mt. Gox is still up to their craziness. They're still unloading. So GPTC on 7-2 with July 2nd, they unloaded 32.4 million. And then if we look at the 3rd of July, they unloaded 27 million. So it just, um, just they keep unloading. Um, and then if we look at the inflows, this, you know, not that many inflows today. Um, on July 3rd, FBTC, 6.5 inflow. And then you have on July 2nd there, you have IBIT with an inflow of 14.1, total inflow of 25.5 million versus 39 million outflow from, you know, it's crazy. So that's what's going on. The inflows aren't as strong. We have a lot of outflows and then we have all this, these headwinds. So that's why the price is going where it is. Even with all of that, the price is still over 50,000, guys. I get it. It was at 70,000. Then we were at 60,000. Now we're, you know, hit 54,000. We're back up to 56 now. And people are acting like the world, the sky is falling. No, it's not. You know, no, it's not. If you look at where Bitcoin was last year to where it is now, it's still holding strong, even with all of this stuff happening. Still holding strong. If anything is discounted rate, um, you know, would you rather hold fiat or hold Bitcoin? At this point, I think Bitcoin is holding value more than fiat is. So I think Bitcoin is still still a good opportunity. I still think we're in a bull cycle. Historically, if you look at charts, you see corrections like this all the time during the bull cycle. So it's up for the strong to survive and stay, stick with it. And then come next year, you'll think about these days and, you know, be grateful that you stayed strong and you continued on. Others that sold, you know, they have to live with that. But let's look at institutional money as far as what's going on with the inflows and outflows. We see that Bitcoin had an inflow. This is week ending last week of 10 million. And monthly flows for Bitcoin on month to date. We're talking about June here. So June 1st to June 30th, 738 million. Now, if we look at ETH, with this is surprising. Even with the announcement of the ETF, they had an outflow of 60 million. And then for the month, an outflow of 37 million. Now let's look at Solana. Solana had an inflow of 1.6 million. For the month of June, they had an inflow of 4.7 million. So, and if we look at ADA down here, ADA didn't have any inflows for the month of June, but for, I'm sorry, for the week, for the past week, but for the whole month of June, they had about 400,000 into ADA. And then Chainlink had for last week, 600, 
thousand, and then for the month of June, they had two point four million inflows. So institutions are interested in Chainlink. There's some interest in Cardano, but if you look at these, these are the three with much of the activity: your Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana. So there you go. Now let's look at some whale activity. What's happening during this downturn? Everything is red. We already know what's going on with you know Mount Gox, German government, you know Grayscale. What is happening with the whales? What are they doing? So this just came up on Whales Alert. A dormant address containing 20 Bitcoin has just become activated after being dormant for 11 years. After 11 years, what do you think this whale is doing? Well, not really a whale if they only have 20, but still more than I got. What do you think they're doing? Are they going to sell? I know if your wallet has been dormant for 11 years, either you're selling or you're buying. So if he's a smart one, he or she, maybe they're buying because there's a good discount right now. Now, let's look at this, though. ETH, we talked about that ETH number, which is kind of kind of scary with all the good news ETH has. There was a whale that unloaded about almost 11,000 ETH from an unknown wallet, and they transferred it to Coinbase. Hmm. That is interesting. And then there's another one that had about 13,000. 13,000 ETH transferred from unknown wallet to Coinbase Institutional. What is going? Is there something going on that we don't know about? I don't know. Then you have this other activity here about 8,600 uh, Bitcoin transfer from unknown wallet to unknown wallet. Who knows what that's about? Another one, 9,100 transfer from unknown wallet to unknown wallet. A bunch of those. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what's happening. Uh, I'm trying to find any Bitcoin transferred from unknown wallet to one of these Um you know, Coinbase, Bitmax, or one of these, but I'm not seeing it right now. But you get the picture. Just a lot of big activity, Bitcoin transfer from unknown wallet to unknown wallet. So we'll keep an eye on that, see where that's headed. Now, enough with the doom and gloom in the FUD. The reason why you're here, the reason why you're following crypto, you follow all these other channels, you're keeping tabs on the crypto space because you know where this is going. It's a big investment. You're trying to get out of the rat race um, but if we look at standard block or standard chatter, standard chartered, I can't talk. It's Friday. They predict that Bitcoin can still hit an all time high next month. What's that number? They're predicting a hundred thousand dollars by next month. So we're currently at 56,000. They're saying this thing could almost double by next month. So Bitcoin price, according to them, can hit an all time high in August, followed by an increase to a hundred thousand by the time of the U.S. presidential election in November. So I take that back. They're saying that it's going to hit an all-time high, which could be 70, you know, five next month. And then by time in elections in November in the U.S., it can hit six figures. So we'll see. We shall see. And Mr. Barstool himself, very important noise, says, stick to Bitcoin, says, I've learned that the hard way. When he says he learned that the hard way is because Last bull cycle, he was into it, then he sold it, and then he got into some altcoins. Most uh, notorious is Safe Moon. He was shilling that heavy, and then he lost his butt in that as well. And then he had Bitcoin again, and then he sold it off again after the um, Sam Backman freed and FTX debacle. Now he's saying he's not making that mistake again, and he's waiting. He's waiting for a good entry point to get into Bitcoin. He's realized how much of a good thing it was. So he goes on to say that, um, let me see here. He says, when the price of Bitcoin climbed above 52,000, Barstool should have owned Bitcoin. I should have bought like 10 million of Bitcoin. I'm so mad at myself about Bitcoin. I should have taken up like 75% in Bitcoin. I should be up $750,000 in Bitcoin. Basically, he says, if the price of Bitcoin falls to the 40,000 range, he intends to invest 5 million to 5 five to 10 million in to Bitcoin using bar stool funds. He understands. And that leads me to another theory that I have, like all this attack on Bitcoin. Could it be that all of the people who didn't get in, maybe they have people in, in powerful places kind of control it and to attack Bitcoin and get Bitcoin to a low price where everybody can get in. And then once everybody has a good amount of allocation, then it's okay to go to the moon at that point. Just a thought. That's my tinfoil theory for the day. I just think that's very interesting. 
Now, if we look at some macro issues here, we see global central bank policy rates. So we're looking at what we're looking at specifically is the CPI numbers. Inflation, which is the silent death, silent thief, robs everyone of their wealth. But the numbers over the years have gotten come down, whether these are accurate or not, or fudged. These are the numbers as they list them or as they announce them. So if you look at these numbers, they're pretty, everything's pretty low. You know, we look at Sweden's at 3.7, Eurozone 2.6, Australia 4%, 3% in Norway, Canada 2.9, UK 2%, US 3.3, they're trying to get down to 2%, New Zealand 4%, Chile 4.1. I mean, overall, these numbers are in the range of 2 to 3.5. South Africa 5.2%, Brazil 3.9, Mexico 4.7. Colombia is at 4 point or 7.2, Russia 8.3, Argentina. Look at that. 276% inflation. If you live in Argentina and you're not in Bitcoin, you need to reevaluate things. Turkey, 75.5%, which is crazy. With those outliers, though, everyone else is pretty much, you know, teetering at the, you know, 2, 3.5%. And I show you this just because at the end of the day, you are making money that is just deflating. All fiat at some point heads to zero. And that's why people invest in gold in the past, still to this day. But then you need another asset that is hard. Another asset that's, you know, you can't inflate it. It's controlled by code. No one can break that code. And that is Bitcoin. And right now we're going through a storm right now. We're weathering the storm. Any other asset would fall much greater than Bitcoin has fallen so far. It's not that bad, guys. It is not that bad when you zoom out and look at the price of Bitcoin from where it was last year to where it is currently. My point of making this video is, yes, things look kind of gloomy right now, but look at the future. Remember why you got into the space and this too shall pass. So here in the U.S., we're predicting that the Fed will start cutting interest rates come September. It has increased. Now it's over 70% chance that it will happen in September. This week, we got some, uh, you know, private payroll numbers and, and job numbers, and the economy is weakening. The economy is weakening, and the um, as far as in, um, interest rates go, inflation, our Fed said that they believe that the numbers are looking good, but they want to be a little bit more confident before they cut rates. So things are moving in the right direction. The reason I say I think Bitcoin and the crypto space will start to pop in the fall just because I believe we'll start seeing these cuts here in the U.S. And all these other central banks have already started cutting, but U.S. kind of people, you know, they tend to follow the U.S. market. That's going to happen. Then we have an election coming up and then, you know, we'll see what happens with that. Elections are pretty good for markets. And then we're right into the bull cycle again. So right now, just please ignore the FUD. Obviously, pay attention. But these are great, great deals to get into your favorite, favorite cryptos. Just imagine if, you know, favorite car, car that you wanted to get, let's say a Benz Beamer or something like that, was down $20,000. Would you be upset about that? You'd try to go get it. If you're in the Legos, a good set that you've been, you know, eyeing for the longest time is down 30, 40%. You would buy it. Same thing here for crypto as well as stocks. Right now, I mean, it's a good opportunity. When other people are fearful, good time to get in. Trust me. You don't want to start buying when people are greedy and the prices are sky high. That's not how you do it. So I'm going to leave you with this little bit of funny tongue in cheek humor here about crypto. And, you know, we've been seeing some celebrity meme coins. They're kind of dumping right now. So I thought it'd be fitting. This looks like it was shared by Laya, um, Leah Halliburton. She's a, a big crypto head here. And I thought this was a funny video to share and end. So, guys, I hope you have a good weekend. Please get out with the family. Get away from the computer. Stop being so stressful about this. But this kind of sums up our lives as crypto people, right? So check this out. Fuck crypto. You don't need the anxiety. Before you bought the bullshit fantasy coin, your life was good. But then you made some money and became greedy. Now the bullshit coin is fucked. And nobody can tell you when it is going to be unfucked. Even the motherfucker who convinced you to buy the bullshit coin, who told you that it is going to be the next big thing, that motherfucker is nowhere to be found. You are on your own. 
and all you can do is cry about it in the shower and hope and believe that your bullshit coin will go up in price again so that you can sell it and make some money and buy some more and then get fucked all over again that is crypto all right guys fuck crypto you don't need